Chris, how you doing? It's Henry. And mowers and blowers! <laughs> nice day today. It's about 41 degrees, and uh, I really was going to just sit at home and watch a couple of movies on Netflix, you know? Uh, anyway, my friend Andy from Jericho got a new car. A little old, uh, 20, 2021 Lexus IS 300. He bought it for his daughter. Really nice. So we're taking it for a test drive, and I noticed that the right left tire was kind of low. It's a new car, it just got delivered yesterday, you know? And so uh, we drove around a little bit, and the tire monitor says 36, 36, 36, 31. So we come back here, and there's a screw in there. So ooh, we can just like use a power drill and drill it out, but it doesn't have the threads anymore. So instead of driving all the way back to the dealership and go, what the, heck? I've got this. We're gonna plug it. Uh, plugging it is absolutely fine when the tread, when the uh, screw, is on the flat tread. It would have been better if it was here where the meat is. So, but this will work though, if you just plug it. And of course, this is a very small screw, not a big fat one with a big hole, you know what I mean? So we're gonna pull this out. All the air is pretty much gonna leak out. We're gonna use this tool to go in and out, in and out, in and out, and make the hole symmetrically round. And then we're gonna stuff this stuff onto that with a little bit of this and just shove it in there. Hopefully it'll work. So first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna rip it out and all the air is gonna come out. That's okay. I got an air compressor. Oh God, that's nothing. Did it break in there? No. Look at, it's tiny. Super small. I'm surprised it's even leaking. Maybe it's not leaking now. <laughs> you have a, a spray bottle? Yeah, of course. This is first. this is so small that I don't even know if this is making any difference. Yeah, I know. Let's spray some water on there. <laughs> Let's dispose of this so I don't get one. Because <laughs> I don't know if this is causing anything. I can't even find it now. Bro, I don't even think this is the cause. Maybe it's just low. Yeah, but to have a to have a screw anyway. You know what? See, I can't even see the hole. I I don't think so. Bro, there's no air that's coming out of here. Good. I don't think that was it. <laughs> you know, you, you want to make sure, can you pull the car forward right. so that that hole is on top so we can let the water sit there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you know where, where it is? You want to mark it somehow? Oh yeah, let's go get some chalk. You guys see any bubbles? <laughs> I don't think so. So we rolled the car forward so that the leak, quote unquote leak, is on the top so water can sit on it. I don't hear or see anything. So we filled it to 41. Uh, he's going to go around the block to heat up the tires to see if it's leaking. But we just sprayed water on it and listened for it. Nothing's happening. So maybe I'm not, I don't have a good video for you. So it ended up that my friend did not need to plug his tire because that little screw that was in there was only like a quarter inch. Uh, I was barely stuck into the uh, tire, you know, because the tread was at least a quarter inch. So we pumped up the tire. It was just a coincidence that that tire was lower than the other three. He drove it home. It's been a day, no leaks. So either we pulled it out and the pressure of the air going into the tire push the little small hole closed, whatever, it doesn't leak. So 
if there was a leak, you would take that screw looking thing and you jab it into the hole to make the hole symmetrically round. And then you take that wiry thing, the rubbery long straw looking thing, you put some uh, cement on it, you know, they, it comes with the cement, you put it on there and you drive it in there so that straw thing goes into the hole like that, right? Plug in the hole. And then you take some razor blade and you just cut the excess that's sticking out or you just leave it because it'll eventually just push into the tread from the wheel hitting the ground whatever driving and uh mesh right into the tire and that's what you do usually you go to a store or a uh, one of those stops and uh repair facilities whatever and they'll you know plug your tire for 10 bucks you know you tip them five bucks so 15 bucks to fix your your thing now a hole in your tread is really fine. You don't want a hole in the sidewall because that's dangerous and that won't work. So you'd need a patch for that, you know. It works, I've never had a problem and I've plucked my tires many, many years. I had a guy reach out to me on OfferUp for my uh, CC, <laughs> CCR 2000, 4.5 horsepower, single stage snowblower. I uh, primed it and all that stuff the other day and I tried to pull it. I pulled it like 50 times. I couldn't get it started. And I had just taken this apart and just blew primer in there and it started up and I put everything back. But apparently either it doesn't have enough gas or this primer bulb is so stiff and brittle and hard that it's not really priming. So I'm not going to prime it at all. I'm just going to pull it without priming it and see. Sometimes, you know, you prime it and you flood it and you get the uh, spark plug all wet and it won't start. Sometimes you don't choke it and it'll start. This thing doesn't start. I think maybe I need to clean the carburetor or something. But anyway, he stopped contacting me, so I'm not going to do it. I just want to try something really quick. I've got this starter fluid. And there's a little hole in the primer bulb. <laughs> and I'm just going to push it in there and see if it starts. spraying some very combustible starter fluid in there. Oh, I'm going to pull my arm out. So as you guys saw from previous episodes, this thing's almost ready to go. I'm waiting for a few things. Uh, the pet cock that comes out of the gas tank, which I fabricated, right? Uh, a nozzle where it attaches to the new plunger that I also bought, a primer plunger and also a uh, three-way fuel splitter that goes from one uh, gravity-fed gas tank that splits into two fuel lines that go into the left and right carburetors respectively. Uh, also some other little things that I want to attach to it, like a fuel shutoff and a fuel filter. But what bothers me is... is the air filters. Now I know that they say snow machines such as snow blowers and snowmobiles don't require air filters because you're running in snow not any dirt or dust or anything like that so no debris usually gets into that area however when you look in here you got those two carburetors right and the mouth is wide open like that i mean that when this is on that sucks like a like a vacuum cleaner, you know what I mean? So I feel that any dust or stuff will eventually get stu sucked in there, right? And eventually clog your carburetors. So I wanted to get some kind of, or fabricate some kind of air filter with for it, you know? So I did see that they do have some kind of a plastic box that has two holes in it, which attach right on there. Two holes of the, the mouth of the carburetor goes right into this plastic air box with two holes in it and then it comes out a thing or, or there's another hole 
and that's supposed to coincide with this. When you close this hood, it coincides with this area here. And as you can see, this has a foam filter on it. I mean, this is trash and stuff, but you know, uh, it probably did come with one on that side too. So that box used is like $20, which I could just get if this doesn't work. But I decided that I was gonna, just gonna get a couple of air filters and try to fabricate them to fit right over the mouth of the carburetor. So an occasional sponsor to my channel, Hypa. Go to Hypa Parts or HypaStore.com and check out their um, lawnmower, small equipment, tools, and um, equipment, and parts. Just carburetors, air filters, and all that. So I went on their site and I said, hey, I could use an air filter or two for my snowmobile project. And they're like, we'll be glad to send it to you. So I, I chose this. It has a tube that comes out, which makes it easy for me to just slip some kind of radiator hose or something over here and then slip it right over the mouth of the carburetor. Easy, right? I wasn't sure of the diameter of this thing, so it could be either too small or too big or whatever, but you know, you can fabricate anything to fit, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, it does come with a pre-filter foam, which is really cool. Under it is the paper filter, right? So they sent me two of these, one for each mouth of the two carburetors. And, uh, you know, they're not very expensive, but like I said, they sponsor the channel. So I get the name out for you, Hypa. And it also comes with a uh, fuel filter in it too. Now these fuel filters are for fuel pump, fuel delivery systems, not for gravity fed. Uh, the gravity fed ones need more flow you know what i mean because these are paper filters the fuel will be sucked through no problem because it's powered by a fuel pump you know which is from the pulse of your engine uh from the crankcase but the gravity fed ones are not so you need to just have gravity flow that fuel so you need one of those red or black plastic one piece things that just has a, like a little steel uh, mesh thing inside of it but fuel flows freely through those. So I, I wouldn't use these for something like that because I'm fuel uh, my fuel delivery is gravity, not fuel pump. So I would use one of those. So I'm gonna try to install this today onto my carburetors in anticipation of receiving the other parts that will allow me to complete the project, if you will. I mean, cosmetically, I'd have, I haven't painted it or anything like that, but to get it 100% running and driving and stuff is my, is my purpose. So I've got you over there uh, to see close up and it doesn't look like there's a lot of room here for it. So <laughs> I don't think it'll work. See, because if you put if you put one in like that, not to mention the fact that you don't want to slip it over it. Right. You don't want this part to be inside the mouth because you're decreasing the amount of input for error by doing that. It has to be over it. So I would need to find some kind of a hose because look, you couldn't fit two in there anyway. I was thinking about it going vertically like this and that would fit, but it has like this, the frame is underneath it and it prevents it from, you know what I mean? So that's not gonna work. And horizontally, of course, you couldn't do it either because you know, because the way this is made, it's it's too far. But I'm going to try to see if I can get some kind of a hose. And I could put this one like here. Like that. The hose would go like this. And this one would be like just sitting here, you know. Hose going straight there. I'm going to go see if I have some kind of a hose that I could attach to it.
So I cut an old um, hand, gas hand, leaf blower chute tube at an angle so that one of them could be pointed upwards. And there you go. So I've got uh, the one on the left straight, a straight pipe going from the carburetor mouth directly to the air filter. Second one barely fit. I had to put that one at an angle and I cut that at an angle so that it would point upwards a bit so it wouldn't get in the way of the second one. And uh, simply just right now, just tape the uh, just tape the tube right to the over the mouth, right, and with gorilla tape. Gorilla tape is very strong. Uh, if I needed to, I could put a clamp over it if I wanted. But uh, honestly, this the one on the left there, it, it's it's held in there with the bar, the chassis bar, so it won't go anywhere. You know that that's solid right there. This one might move a little, but uh, I think it'll be okay. But uh, there's your makeshift uh, air filter system. And this way I'm assured that no debris or dust is gonna get sucked into the carburetors because look, there's a lot of debris in here. You know what I mean? Even though I did blow it out, uh, it, when this is running at the top, at, at you know high throttle, that's those two carburetor mouths are sucking a lot. I mean, any debris is gonna get sucked right in there. So that's... You got to have something to block it. I don't know how it's going to run yet. You know what I mean? I don't think it's really restrictive. You know, it, you know, these air filters are pretty big and uh, the tube is not smaller than the diameter of the mouth. It's actually bigger. So I don't think there should be any air restriction, but we'll find out. Now, like I said, I'm waiting for the primer plunger, some uh, hoses, some T-lines, some splitters and all that. And once I get it all put together, uh, we'll come back and... Uh, see how it runs with those air filters on there. But, uh, but once again, thanks a lot to uh, Hypa for sending me these air filters. You can find these air filters at hypaparts.com. And if you guys haven't checked them out, go check them out. They got uh, tons of parts for uh, small engine equipment guys like us. You gotta go bing. Bing. <laughs> Henry, address the bullet. <laughs> Hello, bullet. <laughs> Hello, bullet. <laughs> Dead ski. <laughs> See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. <laughs>